Well, Shalom, this has been a long time since I made a video and I've been watching Sam Shimon's videos for actually a few weeks, a month or quite a while now and I've been really enjoying them and I believe he is one of the best apologists, Christian apologists in the world just now. I watched the um, one that he was speaking in a church and I think it was David Wood that introduced him as the greatest apologist of, or Muslim apologist or something of all time, which he might well be. But he um, is an actual apologist in the fact that, you know, he's covering Christian doctrines as well. And uh, and I just clicked on this video today. Prove me wrong, Muhammad. Allah is not God. So I'm thinking he's, he's coming to, to kick some, you know, get a Muslim butt here. And, um, but it's mostly Christians. And the last guy that was on was a Messianic Jew. And I was kind of in, in his side a little bit. I must say I was sympathizing with him because he had issues with the Catholic Church, um, which granted, um, I believe, is a Christian denomination. A lot of people don't. But I, I do agree with uh, Sam on this occasion that the Catholic Church can be included as a Christian church. Um, many reject it as a Christian church. Um, and it is quite an easy target, you know, for... Um, those that are Christians to bash <clears throat> but Sam is trying to sort of bring out that um, the Catholic Church did preserve the scriptures um, they were talk he's talking about the Apocrypha you know where, where did the canon come from and what, what I would just say to that you know is that um, God preserved his word God said he would preserve his word if he uses the Catholic Church to do that for a period of time then fine we know that the Romans did destroy a lot of um, Jewish scriptures and canons, you know, in the first century they did that, but then when Rome became Christian about 300 years later um, did God use that church to, to discover and preserve some, some scriptures and translate it and stuff yeah, yeah they did you know, but uh, you know, does that mean to say that I, I must become a Catholic you know, because God use that church as well for for a time to preserve scriptures and of course the answer is no so um yeah i mean uh, i think that uh, people <coughs> people are kind of saying uh sorry that people are asking that if is sam shimon a catholic and he's denying that he's a catholic but i'm fully of the mind that he is a catholic now after hearing what he's had to say um not just regarding the last person he spoke to as a messianic Jew, but um, I was kind of more on his side because the guy wasn't putting across his point in the end about um, the canon and about the Book of Enoch especially. I actually believe that's... Um, I believe the Apocrypha is scripture. I wouldn't say it's pretty much scripture. I wouldn't say it's half scripture. I, I believe it's scripture, the Book of Enoch. And um, even though uh, I think there's about a couple of versions, but I'll just go with the... Oxford edition, same as, you know, the King James Bible, you get Oxford Cambridge editions, you get other King James Bibles, which we've discussed on this channel, so when you see our KJV only, there is about 20 KJVs, and I'm a KJV3, or a KJ3 is called, so, again, it just confuses a lot of people, but these are the issues we've got to discuss as apologists, as people that um, look at doctrine, and I think um, Sam's, Sam describing the Trinity doctrine is close to perfect, close to perfection as you'll get, at least on YouTube. And uh, he's got my respect and I uh, enjoy listening to him and he does deal with a lot of different people. I think um, I listened to one the other night that was black Hebrew Israelites, which were just, you know, um, really, their spirit is all wrong. There's no doubt about it. There's a racist spirit there and there's a spirit of perversion there as well and she's you know it's like you know just it's just exposing themselves you know and the sam did well to sit through all that but here we are uh, we've reached a call and i've found it necessary to start making a video here and um, i'm just going to let it play a little bit and we'll see what this is about i'm going to give you one more chance if not i got to send you out of here because i'm going to send you from spain to rome Okay, so, so this guy who's calling in is like an ex-Orthodox um, Christian who's just became, I guess, a born-again Christian. And um, Sam wants to send him to Rome. I don't know really what that means. Figuratively, spiritually, I don't know. So let's see what he's got to say. Can you hear me now? Okay, what is Let's try one more chance. 
Let's see, what is it? All right, last shot. Uh, I will try to uh, asking you a question about the idolatry of uh, that's going on in Spain, like mm -hmm. uh, making uh, idols and statues and everything. You're saying you making statues is idolatry? Okay, so Sam is asking this man, um, is making statues idolatry? The answer to that, of course, is yes. Yes, it is idolatry, Sam. Excuse mm -hmm. me? Making, making an idol is uh, making, making a statue, statue is an idolatry? idolatry? So you can see even the guy's quite surprised to be asked that question, you know, like as in, in his mind, he knows that making an idol um, goes against scripture. And Sam's just sort of sitting there going, well, is really making an, an idol? It's idolatry. So let's just check what the Word of God does say about this. And we'll go to the lip V, the KJ3, which is the also known as the Green's Literal Translation to Exodus 20. And we'll read it out. In this version, um, does correct any minor little errors in the King James Bible. It does actually speak the name of Yahweh or Yahweh or Jehovah instead of the name of L-O-R-D. And so, you know, I support the name Yahweh, but it says Jehovah. That's the only thing um, in this version. I would say, well, you know. But let's read it. This is the lit V. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am Yehovah, your God, and has brought you out from the land of Egypt and from the house of bondage. You shall not have any other gods beside me. You shall not make a graven image for yourself. So that's the first part of the uh, second commandment. The first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me. The second commandment, you shall not make any graven images for yourself. So that's uh, the second commandment, which you won't find in the Dewey Rams, remember? They deleted that. And if Sam's on board with the... <clears throat> you know the Catholic Church and he goes there for his communion and stuff like that and he's actually also defending their Bible <laughs> then Sam is a Catholic 100% Sam Simone is a Roman Catholic I don't, maybe he's not been confirmed maybe that's the only thing he might argue he might come on and say hey hey you dude whoever you are you know, I'm not a Catholic he might, he might say okay well let's say well, why are you not a Catholic you go to Catholic Church you take the Catholic um, Mass you go to the Mass you take the the wafer and you take the the wine whatever and then then you defend the catholic scripture so that makes you a catholic <laughs> you know what i mean in my book um anyhow so in the, the catholic bible they deleted the second commandment and uh, in the original in the original um scriptures you know the text this receptus the majority text uh, the second commandment's still there and we all know, I think even Catholics know that the, the second commandment is you shall make no graven images. But of course, they, they want to refute that. They want to think, well, they can get to heaven through this grace thing and uh, through the monstrous taking, you know, the cookie, uh, through, you know, singing little songs to God and all this stuff and, you know, confessing your sins, okay, to a priest, which you should confess your sins to God. But one of these sins is making an idol. Sorry, but that's what the Word of God says, you know. And um, in breaking this commandment, in breaking any of the commandments, you are putting your soul in danger of going to hell. Um, but, you know, the first four commandments are paramount. They're the ones that we got to keep before God, regardless of if we are liked or not socially or whatever our family or wives or husbands think about us or children think about us. You know, if, if we were saying that we're born again Christians and we love Jesus Christ, do you think Jesus would expect us to uh, be baptized in the Spirit and actually keep the Ten Commandments? Because how can you have the Holy Spirit without keeping the Ten Commandments? How can you, like, get born again? <coughs> and then, uh, Sam, you know, have you ever gone and made an idol, Sam? Have you ever actually gone and fashioned an image? Uh, have you got any images in your house, Sam? Have you got any little uh, idols there of wood or stone? Or metal, because I know my my own father was an atheist, and um, he actually had a metal image, as it were, of a woman, and I I just took it to the uh, to the uh, place where they did the auctions, you know, and you know how much I got for it. I think the metal was probably worth about 
50 bucks or at least 50 100 bucks something like that because it was made out of um I think it was uh iron I think it was made of iron so the the actual iron ore itself you know would have been worth something but I only got 10 bucks for it man and I I, I would have I would have thrown it away or given it away but you know I just thought I'll take it to the auction and see what we'll get for it but there you go if I was if I was more zealous I'd have probably destroyed it <laughs> you know what I'm saying so you should make no graven images for yourself verse 4 or any likeness in the heavens above or in the earth beneath so that's no graven images out of your own imagination or any likenesses in the heavens like birds or whatever or you know planet gods for example like they have in the catholic church you know idols to mars jupiter saturn what you have you above or in the earth beneath okay so you could have images of snakes or crocodiles like they have in uh, India which they worship you know in Hinduism especially snakes so I wonder why they want to worship a snake when the, in the Bible that Satan is a snake <clears throat> or in the waters under the earth okay so fish and um, mermaids for example or any of these um, hybrid creatures that are in Satan's kingdom you shall not bow down to them and you shall not serve them Okay, so you shall not bow down to them. So you not make them first of all. You shall not bow down to them, which they actually do. Have, have you ever have you ever seen a Catholic go into Catholic mass? What's the first thing they do? They bow down to the idol of Mary, the mother and child. They actually bow down to it. Some of them actually kiss the feet. They kiss the hands. Um, if you're in the you know the Orthodox, so-called Orthodox Church, Orthodox should mean that you actually respect the commandments of God but you know orthodox in the eastern tradition means that you kiss little icons and images but that's not orthodox that's idolatry that's idolatry man um, if you want to know what denomination I'm from Christian denomination I'm orthodox that's what I've told you can ask people <coughs> about people have asked me well, what what's your belief since I'm orthodox does that mean to say that I make idols and kiss them I'm an artist so you're saying that if I if I do a, a painting of somebody, then I'll, I'll kiss that painting and no, not at all, absolutely not. It's idolatry, right? So, yeah. Um, you shall not bow to them, and you shall not serve them. Okay, so that the last part is where you know that you're talking about people who are seriously into idolatry. You know, they've fashioned their image, they've bowed down to it, and on occasion these images start to come alive as you've actually seen in the Catholic Church especially of Mary you start talking to people go and do this or you know the, the Blessed Mother said this or that and I'm not saying that Jesus Mother isn't blessed or Jesus Mother yep, yeah, yeah sure Mary is the Blessed Mother of our Lord Jesus Christ but is the idol uh, does, it, does it represent an actual living person no, no it doesn't it doesn't it's just a piece of wood or a piece of stone fashioned in the image of something. It doesn't represent them. How can it, how can a piece of stone or wood represent you or represent someone else? You know, if you have a best friend and um, maybe they're going traveling somewhere and they say, well, I'll just give you this little image of me and you can bow down to it and remember me. And that would be weird, right? I mean, if, 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 if that actually happened. I see the girlfriend or boyfriend. Well, I'm going out. I'm going to university. But I'll, I'll just give you this little a trinket of me here, this little icon, and you can just bow down and kiss it and worship it. You know, when you miss me, you know. No, that's, that'd be weird, man. Right? So uh, why do we then do that to the saints? Why? Why does a church out there actually teach that this is actually a thing that's pleasing to God? And second of all, pleasing to the saints. Do you think the saints are? happy about what they're doing in the in these idolatrous churches Eastern Orthodox, whatever Orthodox they're talking about or even the Catholic Church right, which I thank them for preserving my scriptures or, or God's um, Bible the scriptures, except they've messed up the second commandment, the Dewey Rams, it's, it's not my Bible, I go by the King James Bible, I think Sam does as well so how can, you know I, I just, I'm pretty confused to be honest with you
about what Sam really believes in and stuff because he's a little bit inconsistent in these areas, you know. For I am Yahweh, or Jehovah, your God, a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers uh, on sons on the third and fourth generations who hate me. So God actually sees people who are idolatrous and um, that these are actions which go against the very nature of God. God sees it as actually someone mocking him, hating on him, not loving him, not giving love to him and all this adoration. God sees it as hate because he sees that person mocking him when they are kneeling before an image and kissing it. That doesn't impress God whatsoever. God looks at that and is jealous and is quite angry about it. In fact, in fact, not quite angry. He is actually very angry about it. And he says that he will visit the iniquity of the fathers on sons. In other words, families that just do this from generation to generation. He'll be rebuking them, chastising them from generation to generation. Those who hate me and doing kindness to thousands. To those loving me to keep my commandments. Very, very, very simple. So I'm just going to let the rest of this video play play out. Well, well that, that's my, my question, question to you. To you. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, so is that you're, you're thinking that having an image, a statue, is idolatry? Not, not exactly. exactly. Because because you know, what what makes it idolatrous? Uh, the, the thing that you you, you worship is the statue, and you pray. And what is worship? Excuse me. What is, what is worship? worship? Well, worship. Um, I, understand I understand by worship, worship if you talk, talk to the statue, statue uh, if you believe that the statue is... Uh, and and which, which moron thinks the statue is, is that person as opposed to a representation of the... So if, if you're a born-again Christian coming out of the Catholic Church or the Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox or whatever, this guy's in Spain, Sam is the wrong guy to go to to advise you which church to go to and how to worship God. He's just the wrong guy. Um, as far as if you're in Islam, as far as you, if you're, um, I guess, confused about the Trinity or something like that, I guess Sam's the right person to go to because he's got quite a lot of knowledge about that. He's what would you, what I would call a learned man. Um, I don't know much else about him. You know, I know he's got some issues going on with his family. My prayers are definitely with him, but as far as as far as that, I'm not really interested in people's backgrounds. When I say that I don't know him that well, as in I don't know if um, I don't know what spiritual gifts he has, for example, I don't know if he believes in the nine spiritual gifts. I've not come across a video where he's he's lifting up the the spiritual gifts. And I was going to make a video in that area as well recently because yes, there is there is a lot of expose videos on all the charlotte and all the fake um, demonic uh, congregations that are going on out there. But there's just not. Um, is just not the videos at all going on about the real Holy Spirit movement that was started at Pentecost. And um, because I probably just don't have time, or don't have, I guess, um, the time as, as it were to make another video about it, what I will do is just leave a video below the toolbar for Sam and for others to actually refute themselves. I'll give you a missionary who is very prolific and that planted a lot of churches in Africa. And you can look at this guy's life as compared to uh, whatever you think the church fathers are, whoever you think they are, whoever they are, you can compare this guy to him, try and refute this man. You know who it just went, you know, I won't tell you any more about it. I'll leave the video below and you can leave comments below. You can go on and watch it. If Sam obviously won't probably respect me enough to, uh, to do that himself. But um, certainly, if there's anyone else that um, you know can or knows Sam, they can watch the video, refute it a little bit, and um, you know take it to him and say, "Hey, you know this. What what do you think of this guy?" And hold him up to the other so-called church fathers that Sam is trying to defend here. You know the Jesuits or whatever, and um, you know see where he stands with it. First person who's alive with God. Oh. <laughs> Um, I understand it this way. I live in Spain, and as I'm not a Catholic, and the Orthodox have icons as well, and they have images, and they'll go to the images and kiss those icons, not because they think that icon is that person, but because the icon signifies a person who's alive and perfected with the Lord Jesus Christ. So, which idiot thinks that statue is the actual person 
and that they're talking to the actual person as opposed to that icon being a visible reminder. So I'm worried that you would make a, a idol in the first place of a, of a friend or a god or something like that. I mean, you've got to be mentally retarded to actually do that in the first place and place it before people. You know, as if to say that, you know, it's there on some type of altar. It's what people meant to do. Sam, you know, so we're not meant to do in the first place if you read the second commandment, you know. Reminder of a person who's glorified with the Lord, who is highly exalted with the Lord. Okay, well, I, I don't have any problems with paintings or maybe icons if you if okay. you have some paintings in the church. But in the moment... Well, I, the moment that you bothers you, so it's okay to have an icon. All right, so so what the guy's saying is it, it, it's, let's say, for example, some of the frescoes in some of the, the churches, some of the Catholic churches or whatever, so let's say frescoes, so you look up and there's paintings that, you know, Michelangelo and so on have done. He doesn't have a problem with that. And you know something? I don't either. If they're just paintings and they're there and they're sort of out of reach of people so that they can't bow down and worship them or kiss them or something like that, I think that's all right, personally. I don't think that comes under the category of having an idol, as it's been described in the Second Commandment. So let's see what Sam says about that. On our painting, but not a statue. Who made you oh. bot, judge, jury, and execution? Well, who made Sam? Who made Sam? Who made you judge, jury, and execution? I mean, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Uh, with all due respect, I mean, uh, I wish. Uh, he does have a zeal for obviously the Lord Jesus Christ he does have but it's, like it's parallel to the Catholic Church like he thinks I just think that there's somehow he ties his zeal as a Christian into his love for Jesus Christ and it's on a par with the Catholic Church and I just think you should let that go Sam let the Catholic Church go it's big enough to take care of itself you don't need to defend it brother unless you're a Jesuit then you know you, you, you want to uh, send imams out to uh, attack Protestants or something like that or you think that's the you know you think that Islam is the tool of the Catholic Church to attack Protestants if that's what you think brother you're <laughs> you're a devil I'll just say that right now if that's what you think Sam Shimon if you think that what that's what the the Muslim um, um, uh, denomination whatever you want to call it the Muslim religion is about as a tool of Satan to uh, to strike the Protestant Church then what I would say, I would refute that, rebuke that in the name of Jesus Christ, and then we'll see what happens to the Catholic Church in future. It bothers me. It's the moment that you uh, bow to the icon and you Who kiss Who told the... you bowing to a statue is uh, idolatry? God if I show you in Scripture, they bow to icons and they bow to kings with God's approval. That means you don't know the Bible. All right, so by yeah, a king is not an icon or an idol, is it, Sam? A king is a human being. Right, and also it'd be interesting to to know that if Sam thinks that the, perhaps the Pope is a king, then do you think the Sam? I wonder if you ever watched this video. Do you think that the Pope is actually a king as well? That he's worthy of being bound down to and uh, worshipped and called, you know, Christ on earth? Do you do you actually think that Sam? Like while I'm at it, you know, what I'm saying while I'm making this video and all the refutals and questions and stuff. Do you think that the Pope is sitting in uh, Christ's stead on earth and that he deserves worship as Christ on earth? Because that's what the Catholic Church taught in the, uh, yeah, in the, in, in the killing times as it were, when they actually murdered, burned at the stake Christians, even people who translated scripture, you know, um, Tinsdale and all these people that the Catholic Church burned them at the stake. So are you on board with that, Sam? You think that the the Catholic Church were right to do that, Sam? Do you really do you really think the Catholic Church were right to destroy Christians, you know, that have a biblical faith, even though Trinitarians, Sam, like you? And the Catholic Church killed still killed them because they were Trinitarians. It didn't stop them from murdering them. I'm speaking in I, I definitely don't know the Bible okay. uh, as much as you do. That's why okay, I'm do you know first Chronicles twenty nine twenty? Excuse me? Do you know First Chronicles 29, 20? Where Israel bowed down with their face to the ground before God and King David to worship God and King David? First Chronicles 29, 20? Is that in your Bible? Have you read that? All right. So Sam, uh, King David was the anointed man at that time. He, you know, his throne, as you know, Sam, 
you know, was blessed for eternity, that the, the throne of David is something that is blessed and something that um, the Messiah himself, the lineage of the Messiah came through. So at that time, yes, it was all right. God says it was all right. Yeah. Yeah, it, it has to be in the Bible. I just oh, I read the okay, Bible. Okay, so I'm answering time. you. Listen. Yeah, so sure. did God allow them to commit idolatry because they bowed to God and to David to worship God and David together? Was that idolatry? No, it's not well, idolatry. If God allowed it, it's oh, not okay. idolatry. Correct. So what about Joshua the, the, the 7 correct. verse 6? where Joshua and the elders of Israel bowed down to the icon, the ark. The ark, the mercy seat, and the cherubim bowed down to it and remained prostrate before it all day till evening. Did they... Okay, the ark of the covenant was something that um, represented the throne of God on earth, right? And that, that, that is the literal throne of God on earth, Sam. So the ark of the covenant, yes, 100%, man. I mean... Um, yeah, it's, it's all right to do that. Of course, they, they did that, and it's okay to do that. That is the literal throne of God on earth, which uh, certain the Pope has never laid, laid eyes on that, doesn't know where it is, and if he does, there's no way he could lay hands on it. No, no way God will allow him to go near it. They commit idolatry? That's why I'm calling you, Sam, because I have I'm answering you. Brother, I'm answering you. Uh, Sam. As I'm a new Christian, I don't yeah, want to get rushed with, with my answers, okay? Yeah, so brother, I, I'm answering you. I know where you're going because I've done this. So I'm and asking you, I'm answering. You have a wrong view of what idolatry is. Brother, you know, okay, I did can, my can, seven can, sessions it, on this you, topic. You, you may be right, but can I can I just prove my... What's your uh, objection? I'm still waiting for your objection because you haven't okay, given me this. I was going to say that. Uh, in okay, so according to Sam, idolatry is what exactly? You know, so if, if a church is meant to be a place where Christians go and meet God, the last thing, the last place you'd expect an idol to be is a church, right? So Sam thinks it's all right to, for the very sanctuary, the very place that you go and try and meet with God, sing praise and worship songs, have your bread and wafers or whatever, whatever you're doing, having, you know, praising and worshiping the Lord. Sam thinks it's all right to have idols around there. Even though we've just read from from scripture that God um, looks at it as hatred, people the people who do that, um, God views that as people are actually hating on Him personally. Sam. In the Orthodox Church, they even uh, kiss. Uh, uh, so if point. I kiss a picture of my mother, am I committing idolatry? Definitely not. So then stop assuming that if they kiss... Yes, you are. Yes, you are, actually, yeah. I mean, look, if, if your mother's alive, look after her, take care of her, give her a little kiss, Sam. And if you're kissing a picture of your mother, maybe you're a little bit emotional. Maybe maybe you can get away with that sometimes. If you're a little bit emotional, maybe she died, and you're, you're just you're, you're missing your mother. Maybe you kiss a picture of her. Maybe God will just look the other way on occasion, and say, ah, oh, guy's missing his mother, you know? But if you're if you're doing that like regularly, that's weird. That's just weird, you know. Sorry. It's an icon to show love and respect for that saint. That's idolatry. Stop your assumption. Stop. Okay. Okay. What about? Okay, I understand that. What about uh, when they say that the icons uh, make give miracles? No, because the icon being the representation of that individual. When you honor the icon, because you honor the individual. God can work through images to bring about No way, brother. Sam, that's devilish. That is complete and utter um, doctrine of devils. And I have to I have to actually rebuke Sam Shimon for this is a false doctrine, this is a demonic doctrine. This is this is uh, not Christian. Hundred percent not Christian. Miracles that's in your Bible. Did you know God used the bones of a dead prophet to raise someone from the dead? Yeah, that was because that it was uh, the bones of a prophet, Sam. It's not an image or an icon or a piece of wood, is it? it Sam just doesn't seem to grasp what uh, what uh, what idolatry is. He doesn't grasp what it is. Why? Because he's he's a Catholic. He's a Roman Catholic. He's on board with the Catholic Church. He goes to Catholic Mass. He takes the monstrous. He kisses images of the saints. Does he? I'd like to know if he does. Or maybe he doesn't. 
and he's just trying to defend some of some friends that he knows there or something like that but is that what you do Sam you go to the the mass and you, you kiss images of the Pope you kiss images of uh, um, the Blessed Mother she is a Blessed Mother you do that you kiss kiss your mother's picture you kiss I, I don't know maybe you do that but that's that's idolatry you you you're actually having a, an idolatry problem Sam and I think this spirit that you have which is an idolatry spirit definitely needs to be rebuked and um, I know some people online that could probably help you get rid of that um, demon Sam in your life uh, if you want to contact me I can spend some time to pray with you as well I've done some deliverance prayers before but what I'd have to have Sam before I do that is your utter repentance uh, I'd have to see you repenting I'd have to see you actually, um, you know, reading out the Exodus 20, being convicted of your sin and for it to be sincere. And uh, if I actually see that and you contact me, then I'll actually help you rebuke uh, the demon of idolatry, which is in your life. And it will set you free from, I think, a number of <clears throat> other sins that may be going on in your life. Um, but my, my love and best wishes um, to you even though you're showing hatred towards the God of the Bible. Uh, my hope is that um, in making this video that I bring Sam Shimon to proper repentance and that in doing so, he will actually be saved. He'll save his soul and he will actually um, I pray in the name of Jehovah, in the name of our God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, that God restores Sam's family and um, I truly sincerely pray and hope that he repents from his idolatry or maybe he's just trying to defend the Catholic Church maybe he's not really idolatrous and he just likes defending the Catholic Church because it's quite an easy target these days like he's been he's trying to be the big man or whatever which is very nice it's just a very nice thing but um, God is not someone to be messed with the scriptures are not to be messed with and um, that's all I would say I'll leave the link below to a Christian brother, the missionary, who I believe is a very good example um, to Christians for the past 50, 100 years, who have actually had a real, real revival, which is worth studying. So I'll leave that link below, and I would say shalom, and the Lord bless you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.